What's up everyone and welcome back to another skill cap video. Today we're excited to be sharing with you 10 of the most OP off meta champions that are flying under the radar in patch 11.4. These off-meta picks can be used to see so much instant success due to how unfamiliar your opponents will be with the matchup. If the enemy has no clue how to play against you, then your ability to find kills early on and surprise them throughout the game is really amazing. We're always interested in finding more of these hidden gem picks, so if you've been playing something we don't feature in this video, let us know in the comments below. To be sure you don't miss out on any of our future meta content, don't forget to subscribe and turn on those notifications so you can be the first to learn about these new picks before they become meta. And with all that being said, let's run it. The first pick our analysts have dug up for the top lane is a spicy one, being Stridebreaker Bruiser Nocturne. Nox's play rate sits very low at the moment, only at about 0.7%, but his win rate is the highest for any top lane pick in 11.4, just above 53%. So why is Nocturne top so undervalued right now? Well, first off, Stridebreaker is such an insane item for Nock because of the slow and dash it provides to guarantee you can get in range and stay in range of your E. When playing against champions with mobility, it's not too difficult for them to just run away from Nocturne Fear and break the tether. Stridebreaker Active makes it so much more difficult for them to do this, allowing Noc to win out on fights way more reliably. On top of this, Nocturne's Spell Shield can be such a game changer when fighting 1v1. He actually holds a positive win rate into Darius, and when you think about it, Noc's Spell Shield is so insane for the matchup. Since Darius' Q has a cast time, it's very easy for you to time your W and negate Darius' Q. For a matchup like Aurelia, who Nock wins 59% of the time against, it's kind of the same deal here. Aurelia E has a cast time which you can react to pretty easily, and therefore it's almost impossible for her to ever stun you as long as you're playing off the W cooldown. Nocturne's sustain from passive heal makes him a surprisingly strong laner as well, and can heal up very fast after taking trades. The complete build to run on your Nock top is that Stridebreaker into Steric 2nd and then Guardian Angel 3rd. For runes, roll Conquer and pair that up with Resolve Secondary, opting for Bone Plating and Revitalize. Our second top lane pick is a champion who can abuse the Moonstone and Staff of Flowing Water setup, along with being able to bully most lane opponents. The pick we're referring to is Karma, with only a 0.3% play rate, but a very solid 50% win rate. Karma's had glimpses of brilliance in the past as a top laner, and although she's had her struggles as a support in recent patches, top lane Karma is a very sleeper pick in 11.4. Against meta champs like Fiora, Renekton, Garen, and Darius, Karma can easily harass them out of lane and stack up a big CS lead early on. With the ability to farm and receive solo XP, hitting that Moonstone and Staff Spike will come way sooner than if you were playing Karma support, allowing you to come online and take over the mid game. With champs like Udyr, Hecarim, Graves, and Viego as the most played junglers, Karma complements them extremely well, which is another reason you can collect a ton of free low with her for this patch. The full build you'll want to run is Moonstone into Staff of Flowing Water second, and then Chemtech Putrefire if you need the healing reduction, or Ardent otherwise as third item options. Take Grasp of the Undying or Airy as your keystone. In matchups where the enemy has a gap closer and can trade aggressively onto you, Grasp is great value, but in the easier lanes, Airy will allow you more kill threat. As long as you haven't been living under a rock the past little while, you'd know that Udyr is suddenly one of the best junglers in the game. An underrated champion who's seeing a ton of success with the exact same setup that Udyr's running is Skarner. With below a 3% play rate and 51% win rate, so many players are missing out on what the champion has to offer. Skarner was hit with a small nerf to his base stats in 11.4, but our analysts still believe his carry potential will remain very high moving forward. Chemtank Rush into Deadman's second is just an insane item combination, as it gives Skarner the ability to find picks with very little counterplay. If you add on Force of Nature as your third pickup, then the amount of movement speed you'll have is just way too broken. That's just the half of it though, as Phase Rush will provide you with even more move speed, making it impossible for the enemy to escape, and giving you the ability to weave in and out of fights effortlessly. With the point and click suppressed from Skarner's ultimate, if you have your chem tank active available, then it's a guaranteed free kill every single time. We honestly wouldn't be surprised to see chem tank receive some sort of nerf in the coming patches, as it's just an amazing item for so many of the strongest champions. If you've played as or against a Skarner who's running this setup, then you'd know just how ridiculously broken it really is. Our next jungle pick is one that becomes indirectly stronger for 11.4, and it's Ivern. 
Sitting at around a 2% play rate and a 52% win rate, Ivern is arguably the most underrated champion in the entire game for this patch. The Moonstone and Staff build is still extremely strong, and combined with the fact Ivern is a much lower econ jungler, allows him to rise above many other picks. The jungle XP nerfs hit carry junglers a little harder since they are way more reliant on levels and item spikes to be useful. With Ivern, even if you're a few levels down or don't have the most amount of gold, you're always a factor in the game. Hitting Moonstone and Staff is really easy in most games due to both items being super cheap. As long as you can hit those items and throw shields down on your carries, just by accomplishing that, you've got a really good chance at winning a ton of games. The complete build for Ivern is Moonstone into Staff of Flowing Water and then Ardent Sensor. For runes, take Airy with Inspiration Secondary, running Futures Market and Cosmic Insight. Our first mid lane pick is one you see more traditionally up in the top lane, but highly underrated for mid right now, Cho'Gath. Cho's play rate is around 0.5% with a 51% win rate. Now, this isn't your tank Cho'Gath either. This is a full AP Cho'Gath mid. So why can Cho'Gath mid work so well, you might ask? It's a combination of hard countering meta picks and his core build seeing buffs in 11.4. Zed, Yasuo, Silas, and Katarina are a few of the highly contested mid laners on 11.4, and Cho'Gath has no trouble stomping all over them. The silence in Cho'Gath's kit renders these spell-reliant champions completely useless when they jump into fights. His burst damage is relatively easy to land as well, with the exception of his Q, and since all of these assassins are super squishy, he can take out half their HP bar in an instant with his true damage point-and-click ultimate. The popular build going around on AP Cho is a rocket belt rush into Cosmic Drive second. Everfrost, however, is on the rise this patch and can work just as well as Rocket Belt, so try out both and see which you like the best. Rocket Belt allows you to reach your targets easier, whereas Everfrost gives you perma CC lockdown whenever AQ lands. Since Cosmic was just buffed in 11.4, his build becomes even more insane. You get a really nice mix of damage and tankiness from these items as they provide a good chunk of AP and health. With Cosmic Drive now offering 40 ability haste, it allows Cho to throw out even more knockups and silences throughout fights. The ability max for mid Cho is different from that of top as you'll want to max Q out first, W second, and then E last. There are two different rune pages that work well, so you can try out both and see what you prefer. Comet is very standard and synergizes nicely with Cho'Gath's Q. On the other hand, Hail of Blades is very popular over in Korea and synergizes really well with Cho'Gath's E, allowing him to proc all three charges almost instantly. Another pick you see on the regular up in the top lane who works just as well mid is Garen. The play rate of Garen mid is at 0.7%, while his win rate is crazy high at over 53%. Garen makes our list for similar reasons to Cho'Gath, as he performs extremely well against what we see in the meta. Zed, Yasuo, Katarina, Yone, the list just goes on and on in regards to the champions who are picked a ton that Garen counters. Those four champions are the most common matchups for Garen 11.4, and he wins over 54% of the time against all of them. Katarina holds a 10% play rate, Zed at 11%, while Yone and Yasuo are sitting at 13, so you'll be sure to get really good use out of Garen in 11.4. The reason Garen hard counters these picks so well is due to the point and click silence in his kit along with the damage reduction. When any of those champs try and engage to trade with you, use W immediately and silence them with Q. It's insane how little damage you'll take and how heavily trades will be won in your favor. As long as you play around this W cooldown and don't take unnecessary trades when it's not up, you'll have a very easy time stomping these matchups. The build on Garen mid is a stride breaker into dead mans for the beefy setup. However, if you want a little more burst, Storm Razor second can work really well. Sterix or dead mans works great third, depending on which item you bought second. Conqueror will be your keystone rune and pair it up with resolve secondary, running conditioning and overgrowth. All right, making our way down to the bot lane for a couple picks, our analysts have chosen Vagar as one of the underrated gems for 11.4. Fresh off the buffs to both his Q and ultimate, along with indirect buffs to Everfrost, Vagar is one of the biggest winners of the patch. Vagar's play rate is only 0.4% and win rate around 51, leaving him very undervalued. With how the mid lane meta is oriented, Vagar still struggles to find his place in that role, but can have way more success as a carry bot lane pick. In the bot lane, it's much easier for Vagar to farm up and scale to his level 6 freely, as your traditional ADCs are much weaker early on than most mid laners. Once you hit the level 6, if paired with an engaged support, it's really easy to lock down the enemy and pick up some all-in kills. Since there are a ton of AD mid laners being played in the current meta, an AP option like Vagar is really ideal to have in your champ pool to limit full AD compositions from occurring. With Everfrost receiving those massive buffs in 11.4, we would recommend rushing the item followed by a cosmic 
Cosmic Drive second and Zhonya's third. Vagar Cage followed up by Everfrost Root is such a deadly combo and will allow Vagar to find picks and capitalize on them a lot more. Cosmic Drive was buffed as well here this patch and the 40 haste it provides is just too insane for Vagar. Electrocute is bot lane Vagar's best keystone as the glacial setup of the past has completely fallen out of meta ever since the item changes. The second OP off meta pick our analysts would highly recommend you spam at 11.4 is Seraphine. If you watched our previous edition of this video a few patches back, we had Seraphine on there as well. In the making of this video, there just weren't any other picks our analysts believed to be as broken and underrated as Seraphine for the role, so we just had to mention her again. Seraphine holds by far the highest win rate for any champion played in the carry role at over 55%. Her play rate has started to spike slightly as of recent, climbing from below 1% the last time we mentioned her to about 2% on 11.4. Seraphine's kit is just so ridiculously broken and her teamfight power is arguably the best for any champion in the game if executed well. Her ultimate just has so much influence and can solo win you games even if you ran it down early on. Seraphine wins way more as a bot lane carry than she does as a support due to the fact she can hit her massive moonstone into staff spikes so much sooner. In the carry role, the average time for both items completed is just below 20 minutes, whereas for support, it's upwards of 25. Those 5 minutes can make such a big difference and allow Seraphine to start taking over games in no time. Chemtech Putrefire is such a broken item after its buffs, so you'll want to grab that third, take Summon Area as your keystone, and Inspiration Secondary with Free Boots and Biscuits. Last but not least for the support role, the first hidden gem we have for you guys is Nico. Her play rate is right around the 0.5% mark combined with a 51% win rate. Everfrost Rush Nico support is disgustingly strong for 11.4 as you have the potential to lock the enemy down for an insane duration. Nico's E can root for 1.8 seconds at rank 1 in it, Everfrost roots for 1.5 seconds and her ultimate for 1.25, which totals a 4.5 second chain CC. This is actually lowballing it though, since the maximum duration on Nico root from E can last 3 whole seconds when maxed out. As a result, the maximum chain CC duration can last 5.75 seconds, which, I mean, come on, that's just not even fair. Of course, you're never going to layer your CC perfectly, and it'd be very difficult to hit that 5.75 on the dot, but even upwards of 3 to 4 seconds is already super insane. Nico's early laning power is really hidden OP as well, thanks to the solid range she has from Q and E. When E passes through minions, the duration on the route more than doubles, so comboing an E into Q can stop the enemy in their tracks and pack a really big punch. When playing into aggressive supports, Nico's W gives her some really nice safety, as she can pop it when being engaged on to kite away or to dodge something like a Thresh Hook. The complete build we would recommend you run is an Everfrost Rush, Zhonya second, and then Cosmic Drive third. For your rune page, take Electrocute for some added burst combined with Hex Flash and Cosmic Insight as your secondaries. If you want to learn more about Nico support, then you should check out Dog Lighting's stream as he's a high elo Nico support one trick. And the final support pick to round things out fits our hidden gem theme perfectly as we have Tarek. In high elo at the moment, the only time you see Tarek is when played as a funnel partner with Master Yi. This really shouldn't be the case though, as Tarek completely shuts down some of the best supports in the meta and has so much carry potential to offer in teamfights. Tarek's similar in a way to Rel, as both picks do an amazing job at peeling off dive champions, kiting back, and then turning fights in their favor. With the stun from Tarek E, along with Guardian as your keystone, and the consistent heals he can put out, it's really difficult to engage champions to play into Tarek. If Rel starts getting banned out too much and you're looking for a good answer to the Alistair, Thresh, Leona, or Nautilus, then Tarek is a really great pick to spend some time on. Like we mentioned, as you reach the mid to late game, with the click of a single button, Tarek can pull a complete 180 on a fight and turn what started off looking to be a doomed situation into an easy win. Build wise for Tarek, rush a locket into Zeke's second and then Knights of Out third. Guardian is Tarek's best keystone combined with precision secondary, running presence of mind and tenacity. So that's going to be all for this one guys, if you enjoy these off meta picks that still have really great strength behind them, then be sure to give them a go in solo queue, as they can be very powerful in catching the enemy completely off guard. For more meta content every single patch, don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications as this type of content is pretty time sensitive due to the evolving meta we see. Thanks for watching everyone, good luck on the rift, and we'll catch you back here in the next one.